Hello, good morning. In this lecture, we are going to talk about talk to you about remote sensing. Now, if you see books on remote sensing, the typical textbook definition of remote sensing is the art and science of procuring information from the objects on the earth is called remote sensing. The art, so there is this art, there's a, there's a kind of method that you have to follow and the science. The science involves what we call as designing the sensor system, you know, designing the satellites, designing the procurement of the data and designing, of course, the delivery of the data. So all this art and science of procuring information from the objects on the earth as called remote sensing. Now whenever you are talking about remote sensing, you will be talking about platforms. And again, a remote sensing can be done from three different platforms. One is the terrestrial platform. So uh, if you talk about a camera, handheld camera, and you are clicking images with the camera, that's called the terrestrial platform and uh, uh, you are on the ground you are clicking uh, pictures of the objects which are nearby you and of course uh, then you are analyzing in case you want to want to then you are analyzing uh, that quantitative information so this is called terrestrial remote sensing and you can of course talk about using a moving camera wherein you will be getting, you must have heard about 360 degree Facebook. So this is what we call as a moving camera or the moving sensor. And with the moving sensor, you are taking images of the objects on the earth. It's terrestrial to remote sensing. Okay. Then comes airborne remote sensing. So what is airborne remote sensing? Airborne remote sensing means that uh, you have mounted your camera or the sensor on an aeroplane and then the aeroplane is traveling over the terrain and clicking images of the earth's surface or scanning the earth's surface and then procuring the information of course and then you are again obtaining uh, procuring the data and then you are obtaining the information so this is what you call as airborne remote sensing so typical uh, airborne examples are <coughs> aerial photography which was, uh, which is still being done for higher and higher resolution images are being procured for better mapping of the cities. The third one, the third one is called the space-borne and the most popular mode of remote sensing, the space-borne remote sensing. So space-borne remote sensing is that the remote sensing sensors are what we call as placed uh, on the satellite. And then so, uh, then, uh, you know, the satellite uh, uh, the platform enables the trans transmission of the data to the Earth's surface, uh, the procuring station. So, in India, it is it is placed in Palanagar, though there is a data procuring agency there. So, in Indian, uh, the ISRO satellite center basically deals with the satellites, and there is a center at uh, Palanagar, Hyderabad which procures the data and you know, cuts it into different pieces, stores them in a storage medium and then uh, you know, sends the data source. So that is the space-borne method. The space-borne remote sensing method is one of the most popular methods of remote sensing. Why? Because one, it's cheaper. Um, for example, I mean, why am I saying it's cheaper? Because every time you are conducting an aerial flight, you need to plan it, you need to, you know, spend on the fuel. Uh, every time you fly, you have to spend on the fuel and that, that, uh, that is a very expensive exercise. Whereas a space-borne platform, so usually a space-borne platform is, you know, alive, you can say six to seven years, and then the satellite is continuously procuring data over the terrain. Some of the satellites choose to procure the data only over their own country, when some of the satellites choose to procure data over the entire world. So 
if you ask uh, you know landsat data sets for example landsat uh, 7 and 8 are most popular now uh, landsat data sets are procured all over the world um, and uh, you know countries that are different countries uh, and i believe that india is one of them which only procures uh, data sets only on request over their own countries over their over other countries only on request so of course the uh, the problem is there with the uh, storage space of course okay so now you have you have collected all the data when you talk about remote sensing platforms, so you have to also talk about remote sensing sensors. All right. So sensors are very important. So what is a sensor? Uh, it has nothing to do with the sensor. Board, all right. Sensor is the one which is going to sense whatever the data is returned by the Earth surface or the object. Okay. So what are the sensors going to do? Sensors are going to procure the data. So what kind of sensors are there? So number one the most popular one is the optical sensor right so the optical sensor is going to mostly uh, going to procure the data from the blue band starting with the blue band the green band the red band the infrared band and all that okay so this is an optical sensor so ultimately an optical sensor is going to return you images okay so this is an optical sensor uh, then comes the concept of microwave sensor. So the optical sensor uh, uses the visible wavelength and part of the infrared wavelength. All right, so there is a one sensor which is using the microwave wavelength. All right, so microwave wavelength. So, and then <coughs> with microwave, we will be having a separate lecture, but with microwave, there comes other issues like polarization of data sets and etc. etc. So I'm using, uh, suppose, can use microwave all right what is the third kind of sensor uh, the laser sensor right so there are platforms where laser beams are fired from the terrestrial uh, platform or from an aerial platform or a space platform laser beams now remember that these laser beams are safe laser beams they are not going to harm the human being okay so they are basically trained to be safe so these are the, so so there are remote sensing modes. So what are the different modes of remote sensing to summarize? So more different modes of remote sensing, terrestrial mode, okay, airborne mode, then the spaceborne mode. So these are different modes of remote sensing. And what are the different senses of remote sensing? So typically the optical platform, the microwave platform, the laser platform. So these are the three different uh, typically most popularly three different modes of sensing uh, that is carried out now what are the applications now, when you are talking about applications so you have to think about social applications so many times people are talking about monitoring pollution people are talking about monitoring heat uh, or heat generated by a city for example uh, many people are talking about monitoring earthquakes uh, monitoring uh, possible landslides many people are talking about um, monitoring the uh, possibility of groundwater in a particular area so typically uh, i am in a place which is called Aurangabad, and in Aurangabad there's a lot of scarcity of groundwater so people are interested in uh, knowing whether remote sensing data sets can be used for prospecting groundwater in this particular release, uh, region so there are various applications now one of the very interesting applications that, that people are now studying is the, the spread of diseases. Okay? And this is not something new, uh, especially those people who are working in this area, that's not new for them. But uh, the spread of diseases, uh, this is uh, what is happening is uh, in the year 2001 or 2002, a certain, start, certain event started happening. It was like all the trees of Cedrus Devdara, uh, the Devdara trees, and all trees like uh, Shisham. Okay. So this Shisham tree and Cedrus, all trees, some of these trees started dying. And there was no explanation why they were dying. And finally, it was found out that there was a soil grown virus uh, which was uh, going through the soil and it was destroying the trees. 
Now, how can you use? Now, this is under the sun. So, how can you use remote sensing to understand the spread of such a disease? And this is see, this disease is under the soil. And how do you use remote sensing to monitor such a disease? It might be a good question to answer as a research problem. Okay. So now, when you are trying to address this problem, so you have to use a technique called uh, maybe geostatistics. Okay. So we will talk about geostatistics in some different nature. But for now, uh, that was about remote sensing.